Welcome back everybody. Uh, this is Two Idiots Build a Battleship Part 2. For Part 1, go see the last episode where we built this core of our ship, the engineering section, with our jump drives, batteries, power supply, full hydrogen and oxygen facilities, and a major conveyor network. We also started work on the lower floor as well. So here we're going to be building out into a hangar bay we're going to be building on some armor we're going to be building on a lower deck a little bit more and just progressing this design so let's get on with it so first we need to know where the center of mass is so we've got to disconnect this from the main part of the base to convert it back to a ship and then enable center of mass view now here we can see where the center of mass of the ship is and it's pretty central in the engineering section which is absolutely great and this is where the gyroscope's gonna go. So the closer to the center of mass, they don't have to be close to the center of mass, but it's better to keep the center of mass in one place. So since gyroscopes are really, really heavy, it's better to concentrate them around that area just to keep that center of mass in the same place. So we're gonna build out some light armor over here that keeps them well protected and add our gyroscopes in. And there we go. That's plenty of gyroscopes. We might need more. This ship's going to get pretty heavy, but this is a really good start. And now that we've got our gyroscopes in, we need to convert this back into a station just to save on physics and prevent this thing from drifting away. The next stage is to prepare for the next deck above. So some of these piping options we're going to have to bring up and then terminate into standard conveyors so they can be airtight. Now, since these are critical blocks, we're going to need to leave an air gap, so we're going to place some spacers in. Now, this will create a step up on the next deck above. So we're also going to have to create these conveyors so that we can have air tightness and access to cargo on this level. Oops, there we go. On second thoughts, we're going to change out these blocks because they're not airtight and we might want to make these into bulkhead areas. So we're just going to put something a little more airtight in here. Now we're going to build out most of this deck, uh, start protecting certain areas and giving a little bit more walk space. So we'll skip through this and we'll come back to it in a minute. And we're back after the montage. So we've done our top deck with a glass area over the top of the reactor. We've got a stepping feature going on to protect the gas area. We have protection over our refineries over there. We've got a bit of a midsection going on and a nice air gap over the top of our hydrogen and oxygen tanks. Now this is the area where it's going to be like a crossroads, the central part of the ship, and we need to start thinking about building a hangar bay off each side of this. So we need to start by thinking about how we're going to get to the hangar bays. So we're going to start with some sort of corridor off the side of here and we're going to drop down a level so we can get more towards the centre of the ship to start. And we've got plenty of verticality for each hangar bay to exist. 
Now we also need to start thinking about how we get back up to the top deck as well. So we're going to put a staircase in here because this seems to be like a central hub for the ship. So I need to sort of rework these catwalks around here as well. And that should do it. So with hangar bay and upper deck access roughly planned out and some cargo access points in, we need to start thinking about the rest of the inner hull and some air gap spacing. So here we're going to add some spacers, uh, basically just some straight conveyor tubes that can leave a gap for the outer hull. This will help protect the more explosive areas from compressive damage from warped blocks. And with that done, we can start working on that lower deck. Now, this is going to be quite a process, so we're just going to speed through this. Now this is the main hangar area and we want to have a floor based landing pad with welders built in so we can have spot repairs. So we're going to need to bring this conveyor down a couple of blocks. And then we have a base that we can actually build the welders onto. Okay, now off here we need an array of T-junctions that can give us space to actually put our welders on but also allow them all to be interconnected so that we don't have any stray ones. Now the welders can connect to each other but it's really hard to do a grid of more than one line without having T-junctions. Now we're doing this double-sided so there's going to be redundancy there. So if one side gets shot out, the other side still stays connected. And another one for triple redundancy.
I'm keeping these the right way up just, well, one, so that the airtight side is facing the hull, but secondly, so you can see what I'm doing here. So that's our welding pad and we've left ourselves a conveyor coming forward at the end so we can keep that spine running. And on go our welders. These are connected sideways to each other so every single welder is connected via the welder next to it. But every second welder is also connected via the base on the floor. Now this is a good balance between using up too much PCU and keeping things redundancy based. And to protect the welders, we're gonna cover them with bulletproof glass. Now obviously thrusters could damage this glass, but if we keep plenty of the components in storage, the welders themselves should actually help repair the glass as well. So it's kind of a double win. Plus we're gonna keep gravity quite low just to keep thrust within the ship quite low. So here we have our finished uh, landing deck and welder design. We have some nice uh, show off of the jump drives. The nose section is gonna be quite a bit longer than this, so we are gonna to have to move the ship back a bit at some point. So getting thrust on is gonna be a priority after maybe the hangar bays. But the ship's looking quite large and it's just gonna get even longer. So I think to make a comparison, and we did promise that we'll bring in the Genesis, which is an old ship that you've never seen before. So we'll paste that in now. The Genesis and this new ship, they both share a similar kind of design language. So there's gonna be a lot of similarities, although the interior layout is quite different and we are going a fair bit larger with this new ship. Right now, this new ship's gonna to need to be moved back to make more room for the nose section. It's got a much larger hangar bay. It's got a much better rear thruster pack design. Let's have a little look around the Genesis. So we've got side mounted hangers and there's something we're gonna replicate in the new one. So this is like a double height hanger with again, three jump drives. We've doubled that on the new one. A living area with cryopods and armor storage. This is the main thruster pack under there and room for welders if need be. Interior hangar bay. Yeah, this is like kind of where the mining ship would live. Again, it's a fairly small one. Long nose with a central mounted bridge. Mostly ion thrust, laser weapons, but yeah, you can kind of see where we're going with this. So now it's time to add a gravity generator somewhere as close as possible to the center of the ship and that would be right about here. Now to get the sizing absolutely perfect, we need to turn it on hard and then enable show gravity range in our own info screen. And this will give us a big box to show where the gravity range is. Now that's way too big. So we're going to have to bring that range right down to around about where we think the ship's outer boundaries are going to be. And this also has the side effect of giving us the rough dimensions of the ship. So when I build the printer for this in the main series, we roughly know how big to make it for this ship at least. Now back to the main section in the middle, uh, we've got these uh, passageways. We're going to block this off because we want this whole section to be airtight. Ideally, we want every section of the ship to be airtight. And we also need to start thinking about exactly how we're going to get to the top deck from here. Now we've already got the starting of the staircase, but it needs to meet the top.
So we build a little bit of a catwalk out here and that levels out up onto the very top with a turn that keeps the area quite tight and saves us some space. Now with the top deck fleshed out, we need to start armoring up certain areas. A little bit of extra plating, which was a newer block. So we're gonna add this in and make absolutely certain that everything's got as much armor as possible. Now we've got that bit sorted and prepared to be airtight, we need to start building out towards where the side hangar bay is gonna be. We're going to do away with those stairs because I think we're going to go with a straight passage. I think we can come out level. Now the advantage of this, it gives us more space towards the bottom for thrusters and so on. We're also going to need a bit of extra space because we're going to be placing some welders in here, so that's like an extra two blocks down from the floor. Now in symmetry mode, we can continue the rest because we want each hangar bay to be identical. It's quite a complex build with quite a lot of piping, um, air gaps and so on, so we don't have to do this twice. So we're just preparing the space for the welders. Now these welders are positioned exactly two blocks away from the surface of the bottom of the hangar. So the tips of the welders should meet where the craft should land. And we're going to extend the hangar back further because we want somewhere for storage of ships. block in where the side wall is going to go. We're using heavy armour for this because it's going to act as extra armour for the core of the ship. And even heavy armour plating. Now we are going to be shielded so we're not expecting to take prolonged damage but every little bit helps. Now we're going to double airlock this because the hangar bay is going to be an opening area to the outside. And glass plate over the welders. Just like we did in the main hangar bay. Again keeping with the theme. Heavy armor block again. We're doing this whole thing as much heavy armor as we can because it's so exterior to the ship and it's going to be protecting thrusters and the main section in the engineering. Now we're going to pipe out for where the docking area is going to be. This is going to be so that we can add on connectors and so on whenever we need to. For now we're just going to place some conveyor blocks so we've got options. These are going to be the back wall of the hangar. Bring up around just for extra protection. Now this ship's going to look quite blocky at this point because we're not putting in the armor finesse just yet. We're just basically blocking out the general areas. And a lot of these areas are probably going to end up double armored anyway. Okay, next we need to make a ridge because we're going to be placing some hangar, airtight hangar door blocks on here. I think we're going to use the ones with the windows in. And 
that's that little block there is going to be for an air gap between the hangar and the main ship and we can use that for air vent and accessibility now piping for the top welder section because we want welders on top and bottom small ships are going to come in here so a set of welders on the top and bottom should repair the ship quite well This is a similar arrangement to what we did at the front of the ship, but on a smaller scale. Now you'll note that the last block is not weldable. So welders can weld to the block to the side a little bit as well. So. This should cover the entire entrance really without having to add that extra row of welders on. In theory we could have missed out the first one. But even rows allows us to do that with the glass. Building out the outline for the outer wall. And we're going to have a little overhang so it kind of extends out, gives us room for getting off of connectors. So we're going to go for a armor plate section here, and then we're going to go full armor on top. I've noticed something we need to change, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I think here we're going to need to have some lighting. So again, we're going to double protect this. Here we have some lighting. Keeping everything flush on the ceiling, so it should be like one continuous level. Now here's a point where we need to change something because that outer edge, it's part of the interior of the hangar, it looks like an outside wall, it shouldn't really be like that. Let's fix that. Now you can see the shape of the hangar, so easy entrance and a little bit more space for landing onto a connector and taking off again. And again for consistency, we're just going to keep that glass plate on the floor, it kind of protects the uh, armor a little bit. It is heavy armor, but you know, a little bit counts. And now we're going to work on the outside hull. Here we're just adding some interior protection. Again, we're using heavy armor. 
We want to give the best protection for the most important spaces, and this is the main power area. We're also going to add heavy armor onto the cargo area. And we're going to skip that one because we've got cargo access ports that we need to deal with, so we fill those in later. And it's time to start adding a little bit of shaping to the ship. Again, still quite blocky, but we're going to get some more of an idea of the overall shape. Okay, we've skipped past a chunk of that and uh, we've got a rough idea of what the ship's going to look like now. We have protection in all areas. We've got the hangar bay roughly done, drawn out. We have the side hangars also roughly drawn out. We've got spacing for the main areas around the gas tanks and so on, so we can have air gaps and double armor if we decide to go down that route. So I think now we need to start thinking about where we're going to be placing the cockpit after we fill this gap. Right, so we're going to place the main bridge over here, kind of in front of where the main engineering starts. Double entrance into the main bridge. It's just a style I kind of like using. Totally optional. Just laying out the deck. Now this bridge, even though we can go into combat, we, we will have shields, but should the shields fail and the bridge fail, we are going to have some sort of a backup in there. So the bridge itself does not need to be particularly strong. Now window blocks are always a bit fussy and weird, but I like these new ones. They're quite industrial. They look very technical. So we're going to use these. Now trying to get an interesting shape out of this thing can be a bit of a challenge, but we'll get there. So we're taking some influence here from ship bridges with the kind of wedge shapes that they have. Now the bridge is gonna stand alone. It's gonna be attached to the main part of the uh, top deck. So this is kind of like the lead edge of the sort of upper living deck. But being a military ship, it's not going to be full of lots of niceties and so on. Again, using plates as much as we can to conserve space and weight. We're already at about, hmm, I guess, nearly 4 million kilograms right now. Ventilation, it's got to be isolated. And we're also going to have a double door on here. Let's get it piped up. Now I might change this. I'm not too keen on that cargo container being there. It's nice for the access, but it kind of looks a bit ugly on top of that feature area. Now we're going to go with the solid airlock kind of door. With a more bridge style door on the inside to serve space. I'm not too keen on that corner bit, but we'll fix that later. And we're gonna go with the same kind of bridge layout as we have in the condor. This time though, instead of the screens being above where we can't see them, and only one being in front, we're gonna go with three, right in the front. And I think we'll have tactical information on these. Now, I wish we had angled screens in vanilla. 
I could download some, but I think I want to keep this as vanilla as we can. Okay, with the bridge done. Let's have a quick look. TM. Okay, let's find out how much this thing weighs. Oh, can't use that one. Now we've got to convert it to a ship before we can see the mass. 3.8 million. Yeah, I was quite close. So that's quite a lot of progress this episode. We've done three hangar bays. We've done three sets of repair facilities. We've built our bridge as well. We've got most of our outside, well, most of our preliminary armor in place. It's looking quite blocky, but we're going to start adding some sort of finesse to that very soon. So next time we're going to start building out this armor and add on the top deck. Um, I don't think we're going to build that out internally until we get into the actual series, but we're going to add some thrusters onto this, move the ship back and then start working on the nose section as well. So we'll hopefully be able to do a walkthrough and interior of the ship and maybe start thinking about weapons. So there's all of that and I'm pretty sure plenty more. So like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time.